Welcome to a rocket cyber onboarding overview. And today's objective is to be able to go over uh, your security stack. How do we get things wired up and onboarded uh, for your fleet of customers to be able to start providing continuous 24 by seven monitoring. Uh, the very first step that you're gonna wanna take is come over and navigate to integrations and you wanna come down and actually select whatever PSA that your MSP operations is using. Uh, there's actually two different use cases here. Uh, one is when our security team is going through all of the threat data and we're performing what we call the triage of threats, we're gonna escalate some of those into an incident ticket. And so therefore you'll need to configure uh, the status of the tickets, uh, what board or what queue on where you want us to route those specific tickets. Uh, the second use case is you want to, um, uh, we provide a bulk provisioning feature uh, that allows you to bring a select group or all of your customers onto the Rocket Cyber SOC platform. And uh, so therefore, very, very crucial step on wiring up your PSA. Um, you'll also notice that we've got a series of other tabs here that we also need to configure. And really when you think about the MSP that is practicing a defense in depth strategy, also known as layered security, uh, this is going to align with each and every one of those layers. The threat intelligence at the moment for this account, I've got uh, Alien Vault and Virus Total uh, keys. We're gonna talk about that in a moment under the threat hunting. If you do have keys, you can go ahead and copy that API key, paste it in there and get that configured. Uh, one of the most crucial uh, steps as far as layered approach is to make sure and plug in your API key for your AV. Um, uh, these are the vendors that are supported at the root MSP layer. So you'll notice I'm logged in at the, uh, the root MSP here. When I go in context as a smaller, as one of my tenants, uh, sometimes other vendors are available for configuration depending on if they support multi-tenancy or not. Um, very, very common uh, configuration for like Sentinel-1, WebRoot, Bitdefender, paste in your API token, uh, the URL, um, almost most of these API connections very similar to this configuration. Uh, one step that you will want to do is also map customers for each and every layer uh, that you decide to connect up to the SOC platform uh, for Sentinel-1, WebRoot, so on and so forth. Uh, select this first option, which is mapping customers by site IDs. Um, you know, for some customers, you can put in the um, Sentinel-1 identical numerical value, so which is referred to as the site ID. Alternatively, you could put in the site name uh, just make sure that the spelling is accurate. There's no spaces. Otherwise, that will uh, the mapping integration won't come to fruition like it should. Uh, once we finish up the uh, the AV component, uh, we will want to visit email security. Uh, currently, we support Iron Scales. We've got a number of other uh, email vendors that will also be populating up here. Uh, once again, another mapping component. On the network side, this is where we're listing our DNS uh, filtering solutions. Uh, DNS Filters, the company, uh, Cisco Umbrella, Zorus, and a number of others that'll start populating here. Uh, dark Web, uh, you will need an API key from Have I Been Pond. What's very important to understand here is once you plug in this key, it will automatically start monitoring for compromised accounts as it relates to the domain and any of the user accounts. In order for this to take place, um, it is most commonly recommended to come over to Microsoft and actually start authenticating. If you have authenticated your Microsoft accounts for each and every customer, um, go back to the dark web, you do not need to actually add any emails or domain information here under the dark web. This would be in addition to the Microsoft 365 configuration. Or if you have a customer that's using Google G Suite, you may want to come in here and you know hard code those specific email addresses that way. That way you at least are able to provide some type of monitoring. 
the MFA is actually very new to us. Uh, Kaseya Pasley is our first vendor. Uh, this is where you'll also see people like Cisco Duo, Okta, and a number of other vendors that are on our roadmap uh, coming up shortly. Uh, and this will be able to start providing you know, all of those log monitorings for that specific application. Um, once this has, uh, once you've wired up all of these different sections, uh, you wanna go and visit your inventory of customers. And this is kind of a very nice to-do or task list. In this case, you can see I decided to port, import seven or eight customers here and uh, devices refers to the agents that are deployed. So keep in mind, Rocket Cyber is a cloud to agent-based solution. So we don't require hardware. This would be devices refer to agents being deployed on the Windows or Mac systems. Uh, office mailboxes, you can see I've got a couple of actions here where I need to go and authenticate those accounts. And on the firewall, uh, we'll give you a visual of that here in a moment. Um, let's just talk about MST 101 or whatever the customer may be. You want to click on deploy. If you don't have an RMM, you could grab the command line script uh, or the PowerShell script, use things like Active Directory, GPO, schedule a task, um, and basically roll this out. If you do have an RMM and you're using that across your fleet of customers, I would recommend that you navigate, find whatever RMM tool that you happen to be using download that script, then import it to your RMM. You can schedule it or simply initiate it immediately. Uh, once that has been uh, deployed across your fleet of endpoints, that is going to create an inventory uh, yet again, but this time of devices. And this is what's going to commence the seven by 24 operation for identifying suspicious and or malicious activity. Now, the type of suspicious and malicious activity really depends upon two things. Uh, a is what is the stack that you happen to tie, uh, tie into the Rocket Cyber SOC platform uh, via the integrations that we just went through. And then two is um, navigating over to the App Store and making sure you'll, you will want to review all of the apps inside of the App Store to be able to turn on, turn off certain things as it aligns to your infrastructure and applications that you're actually providing to your small business tenants. Um, once that is done, uh, while you're in context as the root level MSP, I also recommend going over to your threat hunting, uh, clicking on manual threat intelligence feeds, click on new hunt feed. Uh, by default, you wanna at least turn on the rocket cyber threat intelligence these are what we call indicators of compromise. These are hashes, uh, DLLs, uh, callback servers, just a lot of bad artifacts that we want to start putting into action so we can come back and actually get a verdict for across our fleet of endpoints. Um, so you'll want to scroll down and click on create feed. If in fact you do have those other threat intelligence uh, subscriptions and you did paste those API keys in, simply come over, click on the tab, hit create feed, and that would also put those IOCs or indicators of compromise into action to start monitoring real time for those threat intelligence feeds. Uh, once that is done, uh, let's go back to our dashboard um, and let's, let's talk about what's gonna occur now. You're gonna start seeing a lot of red data that's populating from things like event logs to you know, TCP UDP connections over to malicious sites or uh, malicious destinations. Uh, you're just gonna, in fact, start seeing a lot of threat data coming across on their respective apps. This doesn't mean that any, necessarily mean that attacks are actually live in process. This is setting the stage for our SOC analysts to be able to perform triage, which is nothing more than a fancy word for threat investigation. Once we go to uh, identify a threat that needs your attention, we're going to escalate that as a security incident ticket. And that will show up here in the yellow bar where you guys need to actually uh, focus your attention and less on the actual dashboard. Um, with that said, there is one other item that we need to do uh, upon your initial onboarding. 
and that's going to be at your provider settings. Make sure that you're at the parent level. Let's go to provider settings, visit notifications. And if you have wired up your PSA, uh, this email address is only going to be used for emergency purposes only. And then for the phone numbers that you wanna put in here, uh, this is going to be if a, a threat uh, meets a certain threshold uh, that you're going to hit a, uh, you're going to get a, uh, a verbal telephone call. If you'd like to add two or three sequential numbers, these are comma separated. So come in here and put in whatever number you'd like. Um, and uh, just keep in mind that we will ring that phone number at two o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning, if you will. Um, so uh, you may need to give that some thought on where you want those emergency responses to go to. The last thing I want to talk about on the onboarding call today is how to configure and set up a firewall uh, for log monitoring. Firewalls are set up at the actual tenant. So let's say I want to come over here to my internal network customer. What you will want to do is come down to the firewall log analyzer. And in this case, there's a little configuration app here on the configuration. Uh, in order to avoid shipping hardware, those types of things, and given the fact that we have an agent that's already deployed on the, on the network, you will want to select a box, preferably one that is always on, and two it is you want to make sure that this is a static address, so that way we don't have to go over to the firewall and constantly update it. So one that's always on, and two that it's a static address. Now what you're going to want to do is go over to your respective firewall, uh, that you have at the customer, and you want to turn over, you want to enable remote syslog forwarding and be able to pipe it over uh, UDP 514 to that specific IP address. And literally what that's going to do is start serving up all of the firewall telemetry back to the Rocket Cyber SOC team. Uh, once you hit create and update that, uh, and there is a heartbeat, you will get a test threat message that says successfully connected, and then that means you're good to go. Uh, this will conclude uh, today's video. Thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you on the next one.